All right, it is January 1st and I am out here assessing my yard and my property to see where my cutting garden should or could go. Now I'm in the front and probably I don't want to put it out here though this is one of the sunniest places because there's no trees. Um, I don't know that this would work here without taking down Oh, these things are really half dead anyway, but they are still alive. In fact, I probably need to do a little trimming up at the top of these to kind of fill them in. Um, but the idea that I did have was to use my vegetable garden, which I haven't really utilized in the last probably five years very much. It just, I don't know what's happened. It just doesn't grow as well as it was before. And I don't know if it's just um, the tree that has been built right on top of, <laughs> was planted by the neighbors on top of my garden spot or uh, even my own crepe myrtles that need to be trimmed back, which I'm going to be doing. But we do have, you know, a spot right here that other than the strawberries that are in there, there's really nothing else permanently in there. I have some chives and now some lettuces and some garlic and things growing. But I think I will take a measurement of this area. And honestly, we could even bring it out a little bit farther. I'm just thinking as I'm looking, like we could probably get another couple feet. I know this thing is We've got these railroad ties here, but we could even extend it on a little bit. Maybe another two or three feet. And still leave a, a walkway through here. This is the north side of the house, however, so it is blocked. And that's what I mean. It doesn't get a ton of sun, especially in the wintertime, because the house is right here. So once this gets a little bit higher in the sky, you know, it does get sun, but I would not say it gets full sun. It does get some afternoon sun, but once these things leaf out, it's blocked a little here too. I may have to rethink those. I only wish they had not put this thing right on top of my garden. Though it's not super affected because the sun, you know, doesn't come in from the side. It still does shade a little bit. And not only that, it drops the seeds into my garden and then I have to try to keep all the crepe myrtles out. All right, let's continue around. I mean, this is the front yard, so I don't know if a cutting garden would be ideal over here. <laughs> it could be if I, you know, if I put up a nice little um, fence or something right here that I could extend it longer if I needed to, maybe the following year, right down to my apple tree there that I planted. But I would have to be competing with those roots from these very old, not very old, they're not super old, but they're probably 20 year old privets. But what I could do is basically make all of this, you know, gardening space, and then just have the front yard instead of this grass here, which is okay. Ugh, I just walked into a nice, spider web you know really like the yard kind of starting here where I planted the golden door set and like because over here I have the peach tree and that really could be moved you know back or whatever or just left I guess I hate to move that thing you already moved it once but maybe the you know the grass could start here because we've got the apple tree here and the other apple and then leave this front patch grass and really start 
because it's sort of like where the island starts right here or what was an island and this could all be garden so and uh, this is an option though i don't know my husband would go for that but it's less grass that has to be mowed and the grass under here is not doing well anyway so that's a possibility and maybe i could put a little fence like i have over here a little white fence that i have over here you know, I could put something like that back over here to kind of start the garden on this side. We have that vinyl white fence back there, but it's really in bad shape. Something needs to be done with all of that, honestly. Maybe just coming in and like redoing. Really taking a look at this whole spot because it is a sunny spot. Could be really nice for growing. And it's very close to the house and to the water source. All right, that's option number one. But I, what I could do really is just sort of start with what I already have, which is right here, and just kind of spruce it up a little bit and extend out if I need to. I, we had to put this fence around because the rabbits were eating the vegetables. So a few years ago, we just put that little fence around to keep them out and that helps. We do have deer that come through here, but I've never had them do anything with our vegetable garden. And then these two bay trees, and I think I still have some oregano over there, were part of our original garden. This was before the hedgerow was put up here from the neighbors, which I don't find. Again, that doesn't really do anything. And I would like to almost like take this little fence down and kind of start over with some good soil, get it all tilled up. And, and then plant. I like this idea. All right, well, let's see what some other options are. We're gonna go in through the back. Over here is where I planted the, um, oh my gosh, the fig trees. <laughs> the fig bushes, I should say. That's basically what they are. And so this is also a good spot where it gets a lot of full sun back here. Um, these big hedges or whatever have overgrown, but it's like the one spot we actually have grass, so I don't think I'd like to take up any of that. This is an area, though, that does get full sun, and but it is like where the dogs run around and play, so I don't want to take away that one sunny spot that we have unless I have to. Now the rest of the yard over here, it's just too shady for cutting flowers or is already part of my garden. Yikes, this thing looks like it suffered a little bit of that blow from the cold. The meditation garden, of course, does not get enough sun. So here was my other option. And it's just, it's such a small spot that I just don't know if that's going to be the place. Of course, right here by my gardening shed. <clears throat> Let me up now that the rain's gone. I don't have, I was kind of going to make this a little seating area. So this is like right to the left of my shed. This is the spot here. Now my thought was, is that I could do a little cutting garden right here with some rows kind of going across like this. There wouldn't be much and I still would have to leave, you know, a walkway here to get around the garden shed. And then across the back, I'm going to have my tables 
for my seedlings and just whatever, some vines growing up it or whatever I'm gonna do. So here I am looking at it from the other side. My thought was if I am going to do something here, not to say I still can't have gardens here because I could and I will, but I would have to take these two trees down right here at the edge of this little space because they are just, you know, arching over and would just be having too much shade, which is the problem in this entire yard that is just filled with trees, which I love. So, but at the same time, I need to do a little bit of pruning up or I'm not going to have a chance to keep growing anything. I hate to take trees down though, especially healthy trees when they have absolutely no reason to take them down. So that would be a harder sell for me. Even though they're young, this one is really nice and one of them is not shaped great. I might be able to take one, but there would be no point in not taking both down. And then there's one right there that kind of reaches up on top of it but it would be enough and i'm thinking i may just take them down anyway just to open up some space for me to have a garden like i've got so many things <laughs> even this cedar that i love you know self-sowed and now is another shady quite large bush surrounded by these which i think it sort of makes a little barrier here so having a little secret garden in here or the little shed garden would be really cute when I'm going to have to thin out. And of course, again, these are just wax myrtles, not just. I mean, I shouldn't negate them. They are like local plants that do really well, but there's we've got plenty of them here and they just keep coming back. So I could probably take this one, this one, these couple, I don't want to step in any dog poopy here, these couple like weird things, kind of everything from this tree, you know, over, leave that big one there. It's tall enough and kind of thin enough that I think it would be all right, but take these other ones down and that's going to open up, um, you know, up to this camellia, which I could like limb up a little bit and I have been starting to limb it up. It was more of a bush and now I've limbed it up a little. Uh, which is full of nice buds, which will be probably coming out in the next few weeks. That would give a little bit of a space. You know what? I think I should get my measuring tape and kind of see. But either way, I like this idea. There's also a sprinkler right here. And I think they moved the other one. There was a sprinkler right up against the shed, which we moved. So this one hopefully would get all of this. Of course, I've got a hose right there and there's a couple mosquito things guarding it and um, keeping the mosquitoes out. Then, I don't know, we're gonna have to re-put the fence up eventually anyway, which I think we talked about, we may have to take these trees down anyway because of that fence. When we go to do that, we'll see, there may be some other ones that have to come down in order for us to get the fence up. I wouldn't mind so bad over here because it is the south side and it's just going to add a little bit more sun. Everything else is pretty wooded and I just don't see a spot that I could do it. So the other side of the shed is just, there's a huge live oak and I'm certainly not going to do anything with that one. It's just really pretty anyway up here, which is gorgeous. And probably this wax myrtle right now, I'm just sort of leaving it because of the mess that's next door looking really shabby. But eventually next year, I also want to work on this area because now I have a reason to be out here, right? My table. So I've got to work on camouflaging the um, air conditioning unit since we had to move some of the plants out of there when we replaced it and we have to make a new gate over there that goes with our new fence which the fence is looking great we just have to put it that fence is the start of our new fence that we're going to add all along here eventually and these things will have to go when we do that so it'll be right 
on the other side of this tray. So that'll change the landscape a little bit and all of these little weird things that are down here that are just some kind of wild shrubs will all go. So I will be able to plant like regular flowers and have a really pretty garden out here on this side and, and have things I've never, have never planted anything out here before. It was sort of a wild spot. And I like to leave a little wild spots around for the fairies <laughs> and any other little animals. So, so I think I'm really down to those two spots, like I said, and I think maybe even that front spot will be a little bit more conducive than out here. So I'm gonna go get my measuring tapes and measure out how big the spaces are. All right, I am planting my first bulbs. These are the crocus that have been in my refrigerator out in the garage since October. There's 45 little mixed bulbs. I haven't actually planted crocus and since, probably since my first year moving here, I didn't have any luck with them and sort of gave up. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it another shot so I did do the cold method uh, with the three, I only bought three bulbs, three different kinds of bulbs this year. I'm not a big bulb person. And last year I did plant some tulips. Oh, there's a hummingbird. Let's see if I can get him. He's right on the feeder. Oh, I think he threw off, but he was right there. Um, anyway, um, so I had planted some tulips and some hyacinths, some ranunculus. Uh, and some gladiolas, and I decided just to get a couple of, to plant this year. And so it is January 1st, and it is a beautiful day. It's like 64 degrees, so I've been working outside and planting uh, some my cut flower gardens and looking at seeds and all that, but I decided I'm at least going to go ahead and get these done. I have some alliums to plant as well as some more ranunculus, but the ranunculus have to soak. So I'll probably soak them today and plant them tomorrow the next day and go ahead and I'm just like figuring out where I'm going to put the alliums and I actually have an idea for that now as well as the ranunculus. It's easy to plant them. It's like, where do I plant them? <laughs> but I want to show you here. So I've got 45 bulbs and I decided that these crocus are so tiny. They are so small. Let's see. What does it say here? Um, height four to six inches. They are really, really a very short bulb and short flower so they can easily get lost. So I decided to put them right here on the walkway. When you come down my stairs from my front door, right here, so that I won't miss them. I think before I had them out in the front island and I don't think I even ever saw them. Here at least I will see them. And of course they're right here where I will be. And the other thing is that I didn't want anything planted here because of my hose. I had flowers here before and I moved them um, because the hose was like pulling along this area back here where I have the hose. And so I figured the bulbs will be okay. So most of the year they'll be under the ground. They only are low and they'll be just a short time blooming. And then I'm not gonna put anything on top of them. So I thought this might be a really good space close to where I'll see them, kind of out of the way, nothing's already there. So I literally just took my little spade here, a little shovel I have, not spade, but like a little tiny shovel that I have, just dug a hole. Now we have very sandy, easy soil. If you have clay soil or something heavier, it is hard. I remember when we lived in Charlotte, you know, that clay soil and trying to plant bulbs is hard. Here, Basically, the trench method works very well. If you are seaside, you'll probably have something similar where it's very sandy and easy. And I'm not the type that's gonna like dig a hole for every bulb. I just, I don't have the patience. So for here, I just divided my three, uh, I divided the 45 into three piles. I did not count them out for equal distance or equal amounts. I just like eyed it up here. <laughs> And I poured a little of my bone meal. God, this stuff is, I don't know how long I've had this. It's probably 10 years old. So hopefully it's even good. <laughs> but I just throw it in there because, I don't know, that's what I do with my bulbs. 
and um, I think Hummy's back. I heard him. Yep, he just came to the feeder. And now I'm just going to drop them in. So I just wanted to show you, when you're planting bulbs, um, these are already starting to sprout up. So you can see the little sprouts. We want to make sure that they are up. That is like the top where they will grow. Underneath is where the roots will grow. If you don't know, put them on their side and then they will find their way up. If you do them upside down, they won't grow. So as I'm putting these down in the hole here, I just sort of stick them and push them down. There's no nothing scientific here. Here I can see that this is the bottom. There's no little thing coming up, but I see that that, where's my camera? That is the bottom and that is the top. So I'm going to just kind of shove them down in there and I'm gonna put them right on top of each other. They're very small. They're not going to, you know, get a ton of roots and grow really big. So I'm just gonna shove these all in here en masse. Then when they flower, they will do great. I'm hoping it's not too deep. It says three inches. That may be a little deep over here. These are small. So these on the outside are gonna be up a little bit. And the ones over here, they're a little bit deep. I'm hoping they're not too deep. So I'm gonna, oh, what happened to my thing? Oh, sorry, I covered it up with my finger. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're putting these in. And I will go ahead and do the rest. Okay, so the first one I just covered up these lek next to. I just have them all there kind of on top of each other, but totally fine. And then basically I am literally just going to cover them up. <laughs> Very simple, just cover them, pat them down, and they're planted. It can go really fast. <laughs> And that's the way I like to do mine. And they're done. So 45 bulbs just finished. I don't have to make 45 holes. I don't have to make it complicated. I just cover them up and then I should probably put some kind of a marker down so that I remember where I planted them. For now, I'll stick the crocus thing so I remember. And then I'll give them a little water and they're done.